welcome everyone. Uh, seeing uh, lots of familiar names coming into the meeting. Um, we have a few more in the waiting room, so we'll we'll get started in in just a minute and give people time for their audio to connect. Welcome. Okay, I think um, we have everyone in from the waiting room, Juliana, a couple of people, just their audio connecting. Hi, Ida. I see Madhu. Great. Let's get started. Um, welcome everyone to our biannual partners meeting of, of Wash for Work 2023. Um, really excited to uh, to kick off the work program this year. Uh, I know we're all super busy uh, with a big year for for water, and so I uh, wanted to be able to inform you of uh, of what we're planning at, at Wash for Work, so that we can um, make the right connections and um, and align our efforts. Next slide, please. So I am Cheryl Hicks, uh, for those of you that haven't met me, um, and I'm a senior advisor uh, to the CEO Water Mandate and Wash for Work. Uh, I'll take you through our agenda uh, and then we'll have some opening remarks um, from uh, our uh, current co-chairs uh, and then we have some leadership announcements um, for you, um, the new co-chairs for 2023-2024, uh, excited to, to welcome them into their positions. Um, and then we will share uh, some of the highlights of, of our achievements of, of 2022 um, and what we're planning for 2023. Um, we have uh, a number of our uh, work program leads to, uh, to take you through the current status of our projects uh, and opportunities to engage. Um, we also have uh, an opportunity um, on the table from our partners at the Water Resilience Coalition around WASH Collective Actions, uh, which we will share with you. Um, and we will um, wind up our, our meeting talking about the UN Water Conference and uh, what washer work is planning there and would love to also know um, what you are planning. And uh, we have a, a tight agenda and so please use the chat function um, to comment or uh, share uh, any, any thoughts as we go through the program. And with that, I'd like to welcome Kate Holm, um, our chair of Wash for Work from 2020 to 2022 to share some opening remarks. Over to you, Kate. Okay, you're on mute. Are we back? We're back. Yes. Perfect. Um, I was I was thinking about the last three years and um, how quickly it seems to have gone, but how enormous some of the shifts in that time have been. Um, we've seen such enormous things happening that companies have had to respond to and really adapt to, and particularly to really big challenges. Um, and I was thinking about those because it was literally months after Michael and I stepped into our roles that we saw the emergence of a global pandemic. Um, and that dramatically changed everything for everyone and had an enormous impact on business. Um, and at the same time, we've been seeing that growing challenge of how business should respond to climate change. So we've had these two big areas that have dramatically shown the importance of WASH to business and have really highlighted those links between wash to business resilience and also to climate resilience. So it's been a time of really fast change and really exciting things happening within wash for work. We've seen companies increasingly engaging in wash, increasingly engaging in wash for work, and we've seen our members really come together and lead on some very exciting and really thought leading pieces of work. Um, at the start of the time, we were mainly focusing on COVID and how business can respond to that. And Wash for Work was pulling together some guidance for companies on those practical responses to Wash um, and their implementation they should be doing both in the workplaces and in the communities where their workforces were based. And then as we started to emerge from that, we shifted to looking more at climate resilient Wash. And of course, those other work streams coming in on um, the supply chains, and of course, the work that we're really excited about launching at the UN Water Conference on standardized reporting on the impacts of WASH. Mm -hmm. So 
it feels there have been some really big things happening within Wash for Work. Um, I feel really proud of how far the coalition has come. It feels like we're really driving tangible progress now and some really tangible outputs. So it does feel like a very appropriate moment to be handing the baton onto our colleagues. Um, but before I do that, um, just to pass over to Michael to share some of his reflections. Thank you, Kate. And I think we have, here we go. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, it's Michael here. I'm sorry I can't be with you today, but I just wanted to share a few thoughts as outgoing co-chair of Wash for Work. And, uh, quickly reflect on just how much we've achieved over the last three years. It's been pretty uh, impressive uh, in the three years that uh, Kate and I have been chair. We've seen a lot of uh, really significant improvements. Um, and what, what would I highlight? I think we've managed to increase our membership, which is brilliant, of course. Um, uh, and, but also we're very focused on key work streams that are helping both engage more members and a wider group of members but also a, improve our own technical delivery, working uniquely with our NGO partners and private sector companies. Um, and I think that's really important and the reporting and the impact of that. Uh, what, what I would say, if I reflect back on, say, you know, Diazu has been doing wash in our supply chains for about 20 years now. I think um, there has been some very significant improvements and recognition, I think, of uh, of how important wash is as a fundamental part of water stewardship and water stress sites and water stressed areas and supply chains. And I think there's a greater and greater momentum behind this and recognizing how it unlocks so much more by the provision of safe access to water and um, sanitation and hygiene. And I think that's super important really is to get the fundamentals right in terms of getting more people recognizing how uh, you can't be doing uh, effective and credible water stewardship in water stressed areas where there is a risk and a demand for improved access to wash uh, without really focusing on wash and on the demand, on the solutions. And those solutions come working with expert NGOs such as WaterAid, Water.org, and many others. And, and, uh, and that's the uniqueness of this um, wash work partnership. It really is. It's both in terms of learning from the experts, in terms of implementation, and as I said, also. Uh, encouraging others to engage uh, very proactively in uh, and investing in wash in their own communities and their supply chain. So I think it's been super, super uh, impressive the amount of progress we made, and I'm, I'm really happy to be a part of that. But it's nothing without the really strong secretariat that Cheryl's leading, uh, but also you know the members themselves and engaging. And I think that's where I've seen quite a lot of difference is really members actively engaged in different work streams and contributing it and can see actually the value that it's bringing. And that's, you know, that's incredibly important. Without that, uh, we're not really achieving our objectives. Um, so what are my hopes going forward? I think um, in 2023 and beyond, <clears throat> I would just like to see that momentum continuing. I'd like to see more engagement from more companies. Uh, and more um, delivery by the existing companies. And that it goes for the Azure as, many, as much as any other company. Um, and that's really what we're trying to do. That's what our North Star is, is to get the scale and the pace and the technical um, delivery right for uh, improving access to wash to the 2 billion or so that don't have it. So uh, I'm, you know, I'm strongly encouraged by where we are. And I think we're we're very, very pleased to be handing over uh, to uh, Madhu and to Scott. I uh, wish them best of luck. Uh, I think we're handing it in good shape. <laughs> I would say that, wouldn't I? But I think we're in pretty good shape. Uh, but there's so much more to do that we can do together by working through Wash for Work, um, working with our partners. And, you know, it excites me. And I'm not going away. Uh, I'll be on the back benches, as it were, but uh, supporting Scott and Madhu and individual work streams as well. And the Azure is committed as ever. But really to say a big thank you to uh, the Cheryl and the team at Wash for Work, to all the members for engaging and for making, uh, for contributing to the progress that we've made. And uh, as I said, there's, there's a lot more to do, but we're in a good place. And so with that, thank you. Yeah, and thank you, Michael. And I'd echo those thanks. The Secretariat have um, put so much energy and drive into it. And it's been amazing to see these work streams getting so much energy from all of the members and, and getting us to such an exciting place because collaboration is the whole purpose of Wash for Work. 
Um, and as Michael said, um, delighted to announce our new co-chairs. We have Maddie Rajesh from Coca-Cola and Scott McCready from Alliance for Water Stewardship, who I'm sure will be familiar faces to many of you. Uh, so Maddie, maybe we could start by passing to you and then over to Scott, thank you. Sorry, I was on mute. Um, thank you so much, um, Kate, Michael, and Cheryl. Um, it, it's it's a real privilege to be taking on as co-chair. Clearly, very big shoes to fill from both of you, Kate and Michael. A lot has been done, and and I just feel like I've been privileged to have seen this initiative when um, when it was first taking off uh, the ground um, during my time with WhatsApp, and we were writing the business case for Wash for Work, and to see what it's developed over the last uh, five, six years has been uh, very enormously satisfying to see and a privilege to be taking on a leadership role. Um, really looking forward to working with uh, Cheryl and the Secretariat and the members um, and suppliers to promote um, work going forward and build on the momentum that's been created. Uh, WASH is really key, um, you know, as, as to facilitate access to water in communities where we operate, in our supply chains, in our work settings, for all of us. And that's where I feel uh, there's potential to contribute and looking forward to working with you all. Thank you. Can you hear me now? Yes, you can. Yeah. Um, thanks, Madhu. Um, I'd, I'd like to echo Madhu's comments on the kind of thanks to Kate and Michael for the, the work that they've done in helping Cheryl accelerate action and wash for work. It's been really inspiring kind of watching things progress over the last few years. Um, for those who don't know, know me, um, I'm Scott McCready. I'm Chief Strategy Officer at the Alliance for Water Stewardship. So AWS is a, a membership alliance of roughly 170 businesses, NGOs, government agencies aligned behind a sustainability standard system. Um, so that sustainability standard system, the, the AWS standard guides and verifies actions by business sites against five outcomes. So water balance, water quality, ecosystems, participation in governance, but also fundamentally um, extending access to water sanitation and hygiene and owned operations and in supply chains. Um, I'm actually in WaterAid today. I'm actually sat like about kind of two metres from Kate. Um, we are here for the AWS executive team meeting. Um, I'm particularly excited for this role because my water journey actually began at WaterAid. Uh, I worked in Kate's team for several years uh, uh, from about 2010. And WASH is a real passion for me. So this is a bit of a homecoming. Um, I'm particularly looking forward to supporting Cheryl and the team on WASH for Works priorities. So scaling use of the WASH benefit accounting methodology, getting businesses behind the climate resilience WASH framework, and fundamentally getting greater action on WASH and supply chains. Um, I'll also be looking to leverage the strengths of the AWS system. So profiling Cheryl and team's work to the AWS members ex and explaining how the AWS standard can complement all the initiatives that WASH for Work are getting behind. And ultimately, kind of, we have a shared goal in securing more commitments and action on WASH. Um, the last thing I want to say is that if anybody, any of the members have any ideas or priorities uh, that they want to share, please get in touch. Um, uh, get in touch with Cheryl, get in touch with myself, with Madhu. The scaling WASH and private sector value chains is ultimately going to be a collective endeavour. Um, it requires efforts by businesses, but it also needs support from the NGOs and support and incentives from the governments. And all of these things are kind of what WASH for Work can kind of help catalyse. Um, so as with all things SDG related, we can only make progress via collaboration. And that's fundamentally what I see the point of Wash for Work. Uh, so like I said, if, if Madhu or I can help in any way, please get in touch. Uh, thanks. Thank you. Um, thank you all. First of all, um, let us uh, show our appreciation uh, for Kate Holm of WaterAid and Michael Alexander of Diageo for, for their um, uh, uh, tremendous leadership over the past three years. Thank you to Kate and Michael, um, and really excited uh, about uh, the new leadership of, of Madhu and Scott, bringing so much experience uh, to the table uh, to really build upon the achievements um, uh, of washer work in, in the last few years. So it, it's it's going to be a a great uh, a great year, I can tell already, and um, very excited. And uh, thank you both for um, uh, for for 
using your precious time to bring your leadership to to wash for work it's uh it's really important and we're we're grateful um so now uh, to to get on to um uh, the rest of our program what are we planning for for 2023 um and a, a, a quick look back on um on some of the tools available to you uh, that have been developed in um in 2022 and and will continue to be deepened um in 2023 um, so we can go to the next slide, uh, Juliana, to share, you know, the goals that we set out in, in 2022. Uh, it was really a, a, an update, um, as, as Kate said, a lot of changes with COVID-19 and, and a lot of new um, interests and, and um, uh, I think, new um, uh, motivations from, from companies and wanted the Wash for Work uh, platform and work program to reflect that. So um, one of the, the key goals is, is around amplifying business leadership. A lot of businesses are investing in, in WASH and we have um, little bit visibility uh, to date in terms of where um, uh, where those achievements are, are happening and, and want to help give visibility there, um, both to individual companies and, and as the collective business community. Um, in, in addition, um, there's a commitment to evolving best practice and, and standards, um, uh, especially around uh, climate resilience, um, as, uh, as you'll see in the work program coming up. Um, and, and that includes strengthening the business case. Um, many more companies are investing WASH and understanding their exposure um, to WASH risks, um, but uh, investment dollars are, are precious. And, um, and so we uh, are committed to also continuing to strengthen that, that business case and, and show the business benefits um, for your investments in WASH. Um, there's also a clear call from many of you to uh, leverage the platform to to make more connections um, between members, both between businesses and, and WASH experts in some of the, the areas where you're working on the ground um, and have risks, um, but also between um, business members to, to share leading practice um, and, uh, and even connect up programs um, uh, where possible. And, and finally, um, uh, we had a big focus last year to really deepen our understanding um, of climate resilient wash and how expert stakeholders are um, pivoting their programs um, towards climate resilient wash um, and the role that business can play in helping to um, evolve that leading practice. And so what did we achieve uh, on the next slide um, to, to speak to, to these goals? We have uh, launched a... Um, new program uh, as has been uh, mentioned and significant progress has been made uh, to develop a uh, WASH benefits accounting method that is standardized. Um, we got feedback that many companies um, have not been able to report um, all that they're doing on WASH without a standardized approach. So really happy that uh, we've made a lot of progress on this and you'll hear more in just a minute on that. Um, uh, we've also uh, achieved our, our goal in developing consensus amongst um, uh, the, the member businesses and WASH expert stakeholders to have an aligned position on climate resilient WASH and how to bring um, uh, a better understanding of climate impacts on WASH um, and the solutions uh, to that to, uh, to WASH implementation programs. Um, we've also run a consultation uh, to understand evolving leading practice on WASH in the supply chain. Um, many of you, uh, our business members, um, uh, continue to identify the, the supply chain as a challenge um, for WASH from, from many different sectors, business context uh, point of view. Uh, and this is a key area where we can um, really um, uh, elevate uh, actions and, um, and increase impact. Uh, we've also piloted a, a supplier working group on, on how Wash Will Work might give more support to your suppliers on, on these journeys, which uh, will, will help to accelerate impacts. Um, and as Michael said, um, uh, we've had many more um, businesses really uh, understanding their wash risks and uh, wanting to join us to understand leading practice and um, collaboration opportunities. So uh, a good year in 2022 and looking forward to continuing that momentum in, in 2023. Um, many of you uh, may have uh, seen and, and have participated also um, in November, uh, we launched a business declaration on climate resilient wash um, at the COP27 Global Climate Conference, uh, where 27 companies um, joined wash expert stakeholders to launch the business declaration, uh, demonstrating consensus on the evolution of leading practice standards. And we'll be 
digging into um, this work uh, this year, which you'll hear about in a moment. Next slide, please. We, we started uh, last year to, uh, to capture uh, our learnings um, from the year in an insights report. And uh, uh, we're just completing uh, um, our, our learnings from, from 2022 uh, in this new report to be released in, in February uh, next month. And we thank all of you for, um, for your inputs into this. Uh, the report is titled, New Expectations and Game-Changing Ambitions for the Water Action Decade accelerating progress on water sanitation and hygiene um, in the workplace. So we hope that uh, many of you will, will look to this um, report to reflect on, on learnings and evolving um, leading practice to, to be aligned and moving forward together um, in 2023. And in the next three slides, uh, I'm really pleased to share just a few highlights, uh, which I think sets us up for um, our work program of, of 2023. Um, in, in 2023, as we know, global governments and stakeholders will come together um, for, on the important occasion of the UN Water Conference. And what we're hearing is the expectations are high um, to forge more ambitious commitments and game changing actions for the water action decade to 2030. It's recognized that the progress on the global goals to achieve universal access to water sanitation and hygiene um, uh, and safely managed um, and climate resilient um, wash still lag behind the 2020, the 2030 targets, and that at least a 4x acceleration will be required to reach basic access. Um, that's the, the top lines of, of this chart. Um, however, um, there's even higher rates of acceleration needed for safely managed water sanitation and hygiene, and, and those are the, the lower lines. Um, 23x in drinking water, 9x in sanitation, and 5x in, in hygiene. Um, and so uh, global stakeholders, and, and I think we as the business community are, are looking for ways um, to accelerate, um, to answer these high expectations um, uh, that, we're, that we're hearing from the global stakeholder community. Um, and there's an opportunity for business here to bring climate resilient solutions, increase investments, and to extend corporate responsibility, traceability, and accountability for WASH um, beyond the workplace operations to supply chains, employee homes, and communities. Next slide, please. So what is the status of WASH access from a business perspective in 2023? Um, the risks are increasing. I think many uh, of, you, of you have expressed uh, that you're feeling that. Um, and more businesses are, are recognizing their exposure to unsafe and unreliable drinking water, sanitation, and hygiene for workers um, at work and at home, and the material impacts um, on business continuity as well uh, and growth. Um, and this is through productivity losses, um, security of business critical raw materials in the supply chain, in addition to potential reputation, trust, license to operate risks. And climate change is already um, disrupting the quality and quantity of, of water supplies as we found in our consensus on climate resilient wash and the sustainability uh, also of sanitation and hygiene behaviors, especially for the most vulnerable, um, often setting back progress and causing needs for reinvestment. In addition, there are new mandatory sustainability uh, reporting laws such as the EU CSRD now in place as of January, 2023 that are increasing pressure on businesses to provide more disclosure on exposure to risks due to lack of access to wash and the actions that businesses are taking um, to mitigate these risks. CDP calculated um, that and shared last year that the price of wash risk, risk has been calculated at 6 billion amongst just 10 global companies. Um, and so we're really seeing that these risks, risks are increasing and it's expected um, that new reporting and disclosure requirements will lead to inc increased investor pressure um, as well. However, <laughs> on the um, positive side, the business case for investing in WASH is also getting stronger. Um, the business benefits of ensuring WASH access are starting to be more defined, um, going beyond basic compliance to unlock multiple benefits. Important links are being made on how WASH access can contribute to broader corporate water stewardship commitments to improve water quality and quantity, and corporate sustainability goals, um, including gender equality, improved health and well being, education, climate resilience, and economic opportunities for communities. Um, there is new evidence of financial returns. 
for, for businesses um, uh, for their investments in WASH as well. A study released by WaterAid in 2022 um, revealed proof of positive returns in the form of increased productivity, reduced absenteeism, and overall health improvements, um, which are, are quite um, uh, compelling for every $1 invested overall. Um, a 1.3 to $2 average return uh, was found between different um, contexts of, uh, of farm and factory, you know, and up to um, five to nine dollars return on the high end. Um, so this is is really strengthening our business case, and uh, we hope that many more members will use the tools uh, developed to um, uh, to be able to make your own uh, business case stronger within your companies. Next slide, please. And this is a final highlight and um, um, spotlight on, on where to go next. Um, and that is, is really around measuring progress uh, and measure, measuring collective business progress. We have a unique opportunity to change the game and help to close the gap on WASH access through the broad reach and influence um, of workforces and supply chains. Yet business achievements on WASH access are currently not accounted for in the um, WHO UNICEF Joint Monitoring Program measuring progress on SDG 6. Measuring collective business progress on WASH in the workplace through a standardized reporting method can demonstrate business contributions um, and help to close the 4X plus acceleration gap. In 2023, the WASH for Work program will focus on supporting businesses um, for these important shifts in new expectations and game-changing ambitions for water sanitation hygiene access in the water action decade to 2030. Next slide, please. So to tee that up, our work program for 2023 uh, will deepen its work uh, to support companies in achieving WASH goals and commitments with standardized reporting tools, um, uh, guidance for climate resilient WASH program implementation, building community resilience, and to support um, uh, broader WASH access across supply chains. And we will hear from some of our project leads where we are um, in the development uh, of the program. So the first project, uh, standardized WASH benefits accounting um, method, we plan to launch this method at the UN Water Conference in, in March, and then pilot the, the method um, with uh, member companies thereafter. Um, the, the work this year will be focused on developing a guidance document um, for, for businesses and in, in how to apply um, the method and ensuring that it aligns with other um, corporate water stewardship um, and wash disclosure and reporting. And of course, um, continue to advocate for its broad use. And now we have Nate Jacobson from Limnotech who's been leading on the technical work um, of the accounting standard um, to share where we are in the process. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Nate Jacobson. I'm with uh, Limnotech, and on behalf of the project team for the standardized accounting method for the co-benefits of WASH, I'll be uh, providing an update and um, sharing our, our progress with you all. So thanks for, thanks for joining. Um, the, the structure of how we've been working on this project uh, has really been following this um, WASH impact pathway that you're seeing here. And um, aligns with uh, the volumetric water benefit accounting method and a number of others that we uh, took into consideration to really try to make this um, process and this, this accounting method that we're developing um, applicable to what's already being done and really expand on it in ways that uh, to help quantify and, and look at the benefits for, for people and for just the wash sector in general a little, a little deeper. Um, what you'll see here is, you know, inputs result in activities, and then activities result in more direct outputs, and then uh, the benefits, which we're calling the outcomes and impacts, and um, those are really the, the longer term and, and the maybe, maybe medium term um, impacts from the, the project, and um, a lot of times what we look at is the outputs, and we're trying to, yes, cover, cover outputs and what's, what's actually occurring from activities and projects, uh, but then also push towards uh, indicators and methods for these outcomes and impacts that um, are, are, are more impactful for a large number of people, but can also be 
uh, more difficult to quantify. So there's a lot of text here. Um, you know, don't have to look at everything, but I just wanted to give you some examples of, of what's included in these categories. And um, what we've done is we've we've went through a, a you know six six or so month process with a number of uh, project team members and then also external stakeholders to uh, really understand what what is out there, what do we what is being measured, what do we want to be measured, what kind of activities uh, are being done in the wash space that we want to look at for 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 what type of scales and scopes and um, use that to uh, define these larger categories of um, under activities, for example, of water access, sanitation, hygiene, and institutional, um, and then under outputs and outcomes, uh, socioeconomic, environmental, and institutional. But then also within that, uh, have more defined uh, groupings and classifications uh, to try to cover the activities that we want to be looking at. Um, things like providing access to a water source, uh, providing wastewater treatment, uh, hand washing facilities, uh, water governance support, um, and then using those activities um, to inform uh, what's going to result, what are the direct outputs, what are the outcomes and impacts. And um, here you see some examples. Uh, some of the outputs might be, you know, number of jobs created, uh, number of people trained, volume of water treated, um, and then look more to the right. Some of the outcomes might be, you know, improved health and well-being, uh, improved water quality. And then as you look to the uh, impacts, um, what we've done is really just point to the SDGs, knowing that those are a, a key um, uh, indicator to look at um, and uh, they're what we're striving for. And so wanting to really point to those and point people to uh, looking at those targets and those, um, th the language that's included there to be, to be striving for. Um, and I'll just note, everything that's on the slide is, is not inclusive of what we'll be having in the final report, just some, some examples to help uh, kind of provide a little context. And then out of the um, outputs and outcomes, uh, we will be including indicators and methods along with each. And uh, we've defined each uh, indicator and method as either core or advanced currently, um, with those core being um, kind of more essential to monitor and report. They're, they're generally relevant, relatively simple and cost effective. It's not an onerous uh, you know, undertaking to, to uh, collect data and report. Um, and then in the report for these, we'll be having uh, more detailed methods, uh, similar to the volumetric water benefit accounting um, in the appendix that's really describing what activities are relevant, um, what, what's the method to quantify this, um, you know, providing key considerations and equations and whatnot, and then what inputs do you need, what data do you need to collect, and eventually we'll also have some case studies. Whereas the advanced indicators on the right, um, these tend to, these should be considered in our opinion, but they reflect a broader range of multi-benefits and they tend to, you know, have more resource intensive methods. So for these, we'll be um, briefly summarizing them and, and providing a description of how these can be quantified, but then also pointing to other resources that um, maybe have done a deeper dive or provide additional context for those. So to trying to just make it a little more, um, you know, understandable with a short presentation, not able to see the full report, which will have a lot more details. Um, and I'll share more in, at the end about, about next steps. But I wanted to give a few examples of what this may look like um, uh, practically. So first one related to water access. Um, you see the, the impact pathway here. And I've just put in a few of the um, activities, outputs, outcomes, and impacts that uh, could be relevant for uh, uh, new water access a project that would be, for example, a, a groundwater well construction, along with um, some water access training and education. So here you see with the outputs, um, you know, some example output indicators that we have would be the number of newer improved groundwater wells, the volume of water provided, the number of people trained, the number of beneficiaries. And then if you look down at the table on the bottom, that just shows a few example um, uh, indicators and methods. Uh, the methods are obviously going to be uh, much more uh, developed and have a lot more information. There's different caveats, different equations, and things to consider. Uh, but for example, volume provided, that's a very key method that uh, is introduced in the BWVA report uh, that I've mentioned. Uh, but we really want to 
expand on that a little bit more related to WASH and, and pull in um, some more um, WASH specific uh, information to consider. And um, here you can see there's a couple different ways that this can be calculated. One, simply you have meter data. You can look at uh, the measured volume provided annually by the activities. Uh, secondarily, if you don't have that, you can estimate the volume uh, based, for example, on the capacity of the system and the operating time of the system or the number of direct beneficiaries and the standard volume of 20 liters per person per day. And um, we'll provide additional guidance to um, help inform how those um, variables are determined. Uh, and then looking to the outcomes, some of the key ones may be you know, improved wash access, improved health and well-being, uh, improved educational opportunities. Um, the, in the middle of the table here, you can see um, another potential core uh, indicator of the number of people with new or improved access to basic uh, water service. And um, that will provide additional guidance on, on how to determine the number of people, what kind of requirements are necessary. Um, for example, you know, access must be within a 30 minute round trip walk um, and other things like that. And then the, on the right, you see the prevalence and severity of water insecurity. And that um, is an example for an advanced indicator. Um, and what we would do in that instance is, is point to the, um, for example, the water insecurity experiences scales and um, recommend applying those or looking at those to uh, help evaluate uh, the, the level of water insecurity. And then on the far right, you see the impacts and um, pointing to some of the key SDGs that are relevant and that would have relevant targets and just be, um, you know, points to point to for uh, impacts. Looking uh, at another example for sanitation, for example, if you were to uh, develop a new wastewater treatment facility, um, some of the outputs might be the number of new systems, uh, the volume of water treated, number of beneficiaries, number of jobs created. Um, and you see here, uh, we have the volume treated, which is another VWBA method um, that we'll be pulling from and, and just building off of, um, trying to make this con con continue to be consistent, uh, but also providing additional value uh, where available. Um, and then for the outcomes, uh, one example is uh, improved water quality. And on the far right of the table on the bottom, you see the uh, proportion of domestic wastewater flows safely treated. And that's um, potentially an advanced indicator that will um, you know, advise the user to look at uh, before and after data for um, what proportion in the community of interest of the domestic wastewater flows are being safely treated um, and, and kind of quantifying that change. And then finally, just to give you a flavor of a uh, hygiene access project, uh, for example, if you were to uh, provide access to hand washing facilities for a community. Some of the outputs might be the number of new or improved hand washing stations, number of people trained, um, volume provided, and as you can see below, um, here we would also expand on what's already in VWBA and um, provide a little more guidance on if you're directly providing hand washing access um, and if you're looking at the number of beneficiaries, um, you know, what, what volume would be would be relevant uh, to, to reference uh, outside of that traditional 20 liters per person per day. Um, and we expect to do something similar for um, sanitation as well. And then um, moving along to uh, the outcomes, a lot of them are gonna be very similar, uh, but just with more specific um, indicators and then methods. So for example, if you look at the far right, you see the uh, level of wash, wash knowledge and awareness is an advanced indicator and you know, we might recommend surveying people to understand um, you know, how, how are they understanding uh, hygiene and hand washing before and after. Um, we'll provide some, some context and some, some guidance, but um, in the end it's going to be fairly project specific of how you um, type of questions to ask and, and how to go about that survey. So next steps. Um, regarding the, the current development of the, of the method, uh, accounting methods, um, we're working on completing um, the report, which will include um, a lot more context and a lot more details for these um, different activities and 
outputs and outcomes, but then also the indicators and methods. Um, we'll be getting uh, review and feedback from both our project team, but then also a wider set of WASH stakeholders, and then planning to launch at the 2023 UN Water Conference in March. Um, so we look forward to, to hearing from many of you and sharing more details with many of you and um, you know, welcome any feedback that you have. Um, you all have many different contexts and you've seen many different types of projects and are working on this in different ways. And uh, we just really welcome um, you know, comments and additional, additional information and references and um, just your general feedback on how useful this will be when we share that. So um, we look forward to that. And then moving beyond that, we also uh, plan to work on developing out more guidance for business use, piloting the, the standard at a few different places and a few different projects um, to provide some case studies, uh, inform, inform just the development, and then also um, develop some guidance uh, for how this can be used and applied. So uh, thanks for, for listening. We, we look forward to continuing to engage uh, many of you. Um, you have my email and also uh, Wendy Larson, also at Limnotech, her email there on the bottom. We, um, you know, any, any initial comments or questions, we welcome to, uh, to reach out to you uh, or you to reach out to us. So uh, thank you for your time. And uh, thank you for to Limnotech. Um, we've been doing uh, a lot of a lot of work. Uh, I think um, in the last six months on this. And uh, as as Nate said, um, uh, there will be uh, two review meetings happening in in uh, February uh, before the launch um, at the UN Water Conference in, in March. So we look forward to your engagement in those meetings. And Nate has also prepared um, a, uh, a deck um, with a little more detail on what he just shared um, to share with you after this meeting um, and welcome your, your comments and, and feedback as, as we look to finalize the method uh, before March. Great, so uh, our, our second project uh, on climate resilient wash um, and our business framework will we'll move forward our, our work on understanding and implementing um, new global expectations for climate resilient wash programming um, from the COP27 business declaration launched in November, 2022. Um, and all of the, the supporters will be creating a working group um, to develop implementation uh, guidance in partnership with expert um, stakeholder members. So uh, you'll be receiving invitations um, for that. And, and please let us know um, if you would uh, like to join that, if you haven't indicated your interest already. Um, and there's also an opportunity to pilot uh, the Climate Resilient WASH framework um, via collective action um, projects. And uh, we will share uh, in the next two slides, a current opportunity with our partners at the Water Resilience Coalition. Next slide, please. <clears throat> so the Water Resilience Coalition uh, GAP and, and WaterAid um, will, will, will launch the next phase of the Women in Water in India um, program as a private sector led action and partnership. And as many of you know, um, USAID and GAP have been partnering on the Women in Water Alliance since 2017 to improve and sustain the health and well being of women in communities touched by the apparel industry in India. With WaterAid and Water.org leading implementation of Women in Water um, WASH strategy, the Alliance has reached over 2 million people in, um, uh, in India. Um, with USAID uh, partnership now ending, um, there's a new opportunity uh, to scale up the impact of this program by bringing together more companies uh, with shared interest in expanding water security in additional geographies within uh, the key market of India, as well as um, potential for, um, for other markets as well. So um, an open call from the Water Resilience Coalition for any of you um, working in India and, um, and having um, uh, commitments and targets um, for wash access in India. Um, this is an excellent opportunity to, um, to, to partner uh, with other companies to increase, um, to increase impact on wash. Next slide, please. If you are interested, um, we can certainly connect you with um, the team to, um, to provide more, more input, but here um, are the objectives and uh, the approach 
uh, just generally here, um, this next phase of the, the program will build on um, the successes uh, of the existing uh, alliance and its infrastructure. Um, it will be led by an aligned group of corporate um, stakeholders via the, the Water Resilience Coalition um, and seeks to highlight the role and influence of the private sector in making transformative impact on WASH and specifically addressing the S, the social dimension of water stewardship within ESG strategies. Um, so again, happy to provide more detail on this. Wanted to highlight the opportunity here and, and do indicate your interest in participating in this collective action program on WASH in India. Next slide, please. And our, our third program um, on WASH in the supply chain uh, of interest to uh, many of you um, uh, through the consultation conducted with members in 2022, um, the participating members suggested that we develop a new leading practice vision for WASH in the supply chain to encourage and help mobilize increased actions on WASH across supply chains and, and really um, leverage all of the learnings um, from, from many of you um, in your programming um, over the past years. Um, in addition, uh, WASH for Work will support this work um, by identifying a baseline by country um, on the size of the gap and overlay member supply chain overlap um, uh, to identify priorities for uh, potential collective actions. Um, and we will continue to develop a support program for suppliers um, starting on their WASH implementation journey. Um, and this will be a, a working group um, uh, that will be continuing and we invite you to, to engage in that. Next slide, please. And to support this work, um, Wash for Work, uh, as mentioned um, earlier, is currently mapping the size of the gap by country um, and corporate supply chain uh, exposure to identify collective priorities, actions, and targets, and to serve as a baseline for measuring collective progress. So linking back to that uh, new expectation and, and really amplifying um, the uh, business impact on WASH um, using this tool to, uh, to really be able to share that size of the gap and how um, this collective uh, business effort is um, working towards um, closing those gaps. Um, we will, uh, we're aiming to, to have this available for the UN Water Conference, um, which will then structure our work going forward and, and how um, WASH for Work might support collective actions in the supply chain. So looking forward to that and please uh, do engage with, uh, with um, uh, any requirements that you might have. So how can your company engage in leading practice in 2023? Um, uh, we wanted to share with you different areas to engage. Uh, the first one, um, the opportunity to, to integrate climate resilient wash considerations into WASH programs and investments um, uh, via the um, business framework um, outlined in the COP27 declaration. Um, there's an opportunity to integrate WASH um, access leading practice requirements into supplier contracts and codes of conduct. Um, you know, as we develop the vision for, for leading practice, this is one of the um, areas that is, is coming up. Also to um, align uh, your WASH access measurement and reporting with the standardized WASH benefits accounting method uh, that we'll be launching in, um, uh, in March and just outlined by, by Limnotech um, and to share annual progress reports to enable monitoring of collective business contributions to SDG6. Um, as part of the consultations for the UN Water Conference, um, we, we have, um, uh, submitted to the joint monitoring program, uh, the potential for WASH for Work to help um, share um, collective business um, progress and impacts um, on WASH. Um, so that's something that will continue to um, be in dialogue with the joint monitoring program and um, you know, sharing the, the standardized um, uh, accounting and, and reporting uh, would help with that. Of course, this would all be aggregate um, data that we would be sharing. Next slide, please. In our, in our final min minutes, um, a little bit of focus on the big events that are coming up uh, this year uh, and where we plan to, to share this work um, and uh, provide visibility. Um, in, in March, of course, uh, we'll be focused on 
launching the, the standardized accounting method um, for, for WASH. Uh, and then in World Water Week, um, we're aiming to, um, to share the, the vision and leading practice guidance on WASH in the supply chain. Um, and finally, at the um, climate meetings in, in December, um, to, to share the, the guidance um, for implementation of climate resilient WASH in, uh, in business programming. So we, we hope that you will all engage with us in, in those events. And uh, the first one, of course, which we're all <laughs> busy preparing for is the UN Water Conference and um, Wash for Work uh, is planning um, two specific um, uh, events um, in the program, but also aligning with the CEO water mandates um, side event programs um, where we will have additional opportunities. But um, for now, with our focus on the launch of the um, wash benefits accounting method. Um, we're planning an evening reception together with um, uh, WaterAid uh, Diageo and potentially uh, other uh, companies that have been involved in uh, the development of, of the method to provide the announcement um, uh, at an evening reception and then a deeper dive um, practitioner workshop um, later in the week, either on the, the 23rd or the 24th, the dates are still be uh, to be defined where we look to go into more details on how companies can start to pilot um, this, this new uh, accounting method. Uh, so we hope that you will all join us for these, uh, these two events and we will keep you posted on um, further planning as it becomes available. Next, next slide, please. Um, so for those of you that are, are new to, to Wash for Work, um, uh, we wanted to share uh, the, the benefits um, that we, we seek to deliver to you as members of Wash for Work to be rec for you to be recognized for your Wash actions and contributions to SDG 6, um, to have direct access to leading practice through corporate peers and Wash expert organization members. Um, and for us to support um, your corporate water stewardship commitments to WASH access. Next slide, please. Starting in, in January, um, uh, all of you involved in the network will automatically receive WASH for Work engagement um, communications uh, in order to broaden our reach um, to more stakeholders and more businesses. Um, you can engage in the working groups to connect with experts and practitioners on leading practice and the different uh, areas that we're currently developing. And in, in terms of recognizing your, your efforts, um, we can share your logo on the Wash for Work uh, website and materials. Um, and we're also developing a Wash for Work supporter logo um, that you can share on your website and materials to continue to get recognition for your actions. Next slide, please. In terms of, of how the, the Secretariat um, operates, um, we operate through um, fees um, from, from you really just to um, facilitate our, our support and, and the work program. Uh, we hope that uh, you'll find that, that these are um, uh, not a barrier <laughs> to engaging, but really to support our collective work. Uh, for corporate members, $3,000 per, per year. And if you are a CEO water mandate endorser as the CEO water mandate, host the secretariat, um, the contributions that you're already making um, to the CEO water mandate flow through directly. So it's not an additional fee. Um, we've opened up a new supplier um, category uh, also to um, facilitate the support program for suppliers um, and non-corporate partners um, have been supporting us um, in the amount, uh, half of the corporate members at 1500 uh, US dollars per year um, or equivalent in kind support. So we thank you very much for your support. It's, it's needed, it's appreciated um, and we hope not a barrier to your engagement um, and uh, we look forward to kicking off the new year um, and, uh, and achieving our ambitious goals. So looking forward to seeing you um, at the UN Water Conference, and we invite your active participation um, in our exciting work program. Thank you all. <laughs>